James Webb Telescope is finally proving Stephen Hawking's black hole theory. We may soon be able to test one of Stephen Hawking's most controversial theories, according to new research. In the 1970s, Hawking suggested that dark matter, the invisible substance that makes up most of the matter in space, might consist of black holes that formed during the early moments of the Big Bang. Now, three astronomers have developed a theory that explains not only the existence of dark matter, but also the occurrence of the largest black hole in the universe. Today's video is all about James Webb Telescope and how it is proving Stephen Hawking's black hole theory. But before we move forward in the video, make sure to subscribe for more content and like this video for receiving similar suggestions from YouTube. Also, we highly appreciate your comments. Now let's get straight into the video. Let's first discuss the James Webb Telescope. The James Webb Telescope has about half the mass of the Hubble Telescope, but at about 6.5 meters, 21 feet, in diameter is a beryllium coated mirror made up of 18 hexagonal mirrors, giving it an overall size of more than six times gives a Hubble size of 2.4 meters or 7.9 feet. Of this, 0.9 meters or 9.7 square feet is covered by its secondary supports, making the actual light gathering area about 5.6 times larger than Hubble's 4,525 meters, 48.71 square feet collection area. Beryllium is a very hard, tough, and light metal often used in space, which is non-magnetic and retains its shape in very cold environments. It has a specific hardness six times greater than that of steel or titanium, whereas beryllium is 30% lightweight aluminum. The gold coating ensures infrared reflection and durability. The JWST is primarily designed for near-infrared astronomy, but can also see orange and red visible light as well as mid-infrared depending on the instrument. It can detect objects up to 100 times fainter than Hubble and objects much earlier in the history of the universe. Its design emphasizes nearly to medium infrared for three main reasons. Large redshift objects, very old and distant, have shifted their visible emission to the infrared and thus their light can only be observed today by infrared astronomy. Cooler objects such as debris, disks, and planets emit the strongest infrared radiation. This infrared band is difficult to study from the ground or from existing space telescopes such as Hubble. Terrestrial telescopes must see through Earth's atmosphere, which is opaque in much of the infrared region. Even if the atmosphere were transparent, many target chemicals such as water, carbon dioxide, and methane are also present in Earth's atmosphere, making analysis significantly more difficult. Existing space telescopes such as Hubble cannot study this band because the mirrors are not cold enough. The Hubble mirror is kept at about 15 degrees Celsius, 288K, 59 degrees Fahrenheit, so the telescope itself emits strongly in the infrared band. JWST can also observe nearby objects, including objects in our solar system with angular velocities of 0.030 arc seconds per second or less. This includes all planets and satellites, comets and asteroids beyond Earth's orbit, and almost all known objects in the Kuiper Belt. In addition, it can observe opportunistic and unplanned targets such as supernovae and gamma ray bursts within 48 hours of the decision. During the lengthy JWST testing period, NASA officials touted the idea of a service mission, but no plans were announced. Following a successful launch, NASA announced that limited accommodation would be provided to facilitate future service missions if necessary. These include precise cross-shaped guide marks on the JWST surface for use on remote service missions, as well as a refillable tank, removable heat shield, and accessible anchors. Now, let's talk about Stephen Hawking's black hole theory and its relation to JWST. Quote, what I find personally super exciting about this idea is how it elegantly unifies the two really challenging problems that I work on, that of probing the nature of dark matter and the formation and growth of black holes, and resolves them in one fell swoop, end quote. Study co-author Priyamvada Natarajan, an astrophysicist at Yale University, said in the statement, Dark matter makes up more than 80% of all matter in the universe, but it doesn't interact directly with light in any way. It just floats. It's huge and affects the gravity of the galaxy. It's tempting to think that black holes are responsible for these elusive things. Finally, a black hole are known to be dark. So filling galaxies with black holes could theoretically explain all dark matter observations. Unfortunately, in the modern universe, black holes only form after massive stars die and then collapse under the weight of their own gravity. 
So making a black hole requires a lot of stars, which requires a lot of normal stuff. Scientists know how much normal matter existed in the universe from calculations of the early universe, where hydrogen and helium first formed. And normal matter is not enough to make up all the dark matter astronomers have observed. There Hawking appeared. In 1971, he proposed that black holes had formed in chaotic environments since the early days of the Big Bang. There, pockets of matter can spontaneously reach the density needed to form black holes and flood space with them long before the first stars flash. Hawking suspects that these primary black holes could be responsible for dark matter. Although the idea is interesting, most astrophysicists are instead focusing on finding new subatomic particles to explain dark matter. In addition, the primary black hole formation model has encountered observational problems. When too many formed in the early universe, they changed the pattern of residual radiation from the early universe, known as the cosmic microwave background, C and B. Meaning that the theory only works if the number and size of the primordial black holes are sufficient, limited, or conflicting with the size of the C and B. The idea was revived in 2015 when the Gravitational Wave Observatory used a laser interferometer to detect the first colliding black hole pair. Both black holes are much larger than expected and one way to explain their massive mass is to say that they formed in the early universe, not in the heart of a dying star. In the new study, Natarajan Nico Cabaludi of the University of Miami and Gunther Hasinger of the European Space Agency delve deep into the theory of primary black holes, examining how they might explain dark matter and potentially solve other cosmological challenges. To pass the test of the current observations, the primary black hole must be within a certain mass range. In the new work, the researchers hypothesize that a primary black hole has a mass about 1.4 times the mass of the sun. They built a model of the universe that replaced all dark matter with this rather bright black hole and then looked for evidence to confirm or disprove the model. The team found that primary black holes could play a significant role in the universe, seeding the first stars, the first galaxies, and the first supermassive black holes, SMBHs. Observations show that stars, galaxies, and SMBHs emerged very quickly in cosmological history, perhaps too quickly to be explained by the formation and growth processes we observe in the universe today. Quote, primordial black holes, if they do exist, could well be the seas from which all supermassive black holes form, including the one at the center of the Milky Way, Natarajan said. And the theory is simple and doesn't require a new particle zoo to explain dark matter. Quote, our studies show that without introducing new particles or new physics, we can solve mysteries of modern cosmology from the nature of dark matter itself to the origin of supermassive black holes, end quote, Capaluti said in the statement. So far, this idea is just a model, but can be tested relatively soon. Launched on Christmas Day after years of delay, the James Webb Space Telescope was designed specifically to answer questions about the origin of stars and galaxies and the next generation of gravitational wave detectors, specifically the Laser Interferometer Space Antenna, LISA, is poised to reveal more about black holes, including primary black holes if they exist. Together, the two observatories should provide astronomers with enough information to summarize the history of the first stars and the possible origin of dark matter. Quote, it was irresponsible to explore this idea deeply, knowing it had the potential to be validated fairly soon, end quote, Natarajan said. With that said, we have reached the end of our video. Like this video and subscribe to this YouTube channel if you have not done yet. Sharing is a way of caring. Share this video to spread the knowledge. See you next time. Thanks for watching.